Hi, hello, and welcome. Today, let's watercolor some cherries. First, we need to draw them, so you want a pencil and an eraser. I have broken this down into three steps. Um, the one, the step that's currently being discussed in one, two, and three is in blue, and the one that's in the previous ones are in black. So, in essence, to draw a cherry, we're going to draw kind of a sloppy, an overlapping heart. So we make kind of this weird ear type shape, leave it open and then swoop it up and over. Make sure that overlap, that's the part that dips down where the stem of the cherry is in that little recess. And again, you can see I make a weird beginning to a heart and or or a really messy circle basically and then we can add the stem is the final step which is just kind of a quick little flick up if you put a little curve in it it will look a little better you can add a little bit of kind of a triangle to the end of it which will make it look like it snapped off the cherry branch after you've drawn your outlines, you do want to go over this with an eraser to lift off some of it so that you don't see your pencil lines too much through the watercolor. I also went ahead and drew a second cherry with the stem kind of swooping in the opposite direction because I think those little double cherries are so cute. Then we need to mix up a nice red color and cherries have um, some muted reds in them and a little bit of purpley. So you might want to mix together a few different reds, maybe drop in a tiny bit of brown and maybe add in some blue or some purple to bring in some depth of color here. Any red color that you like, go ahead and mix that up. You'll see I have my tester strip up here. We want it to be fairly pigmented, but not the darkest that it could possibly be. Then we're gonna go ahead and kind of start by outlining this a little bit around the bottom. We wanna concentrate a lot of our color towards the bottom of the cherry. So we, we start with our color there. And also it's going to be dark in that little divot where the stem hits it. Then we wanna add some water to our brush, keeping some of the pigment in there. And we wanna fill the rest of this in while also leaving that white space for where that shine, because you know the outside of a cherry when they're really plump, it just shines and reflects light. So you wanna preserve that so that you get that extra bit. If you put too much water in, dry your brush off and feel free in the plump areas of the cherry to pick up a little bit extra of that water. Once you've removed all the excess water, if it's still a little wet on the page, you can extra emphasize the bottom parts of the cherry and the dark areas by going ahead and re-pigmenting your brush or putting more color on your brush and just barely touching kind of the sides and bringing that up a little bit so that you have a smoother gradient. What we're trying to do here, it doesn't have to be a perfectly flat gradient. Um, because cherries are natural, but you want to make sure that kind of the sides, the bottom, and the stem area have more pigment than the top and the bulbous part kind of towards the center left. So I'll go ahead and repeat that on these two other cherries while I let my first cherry dry a little more. Okay, so cherries are round and round objects around the sides and the bottom, as well as in that little dip area are going to be darker. So anywhere that kind of goes into the background is gonna be darker. In order to create those shadowy co colors, we want to mix up a dark purple kind of color that's complementary to your red color. And we want this layer to be fairly dry. It doesn't need to be 100% dry. It would be good if it were slightly damp on the paper so that you can add that dark purple shadow to the bottom of the cherry. We're assuming our light source is coming from the top. And then I add a little water to my brush after I first touched that dark pigment on and I wash that up just a little bit onto the sides keeping the darkest color concentrated right at the bottom. 
Again, washing my brush off a little more and actually kind of helping that transition a little bit more. I add a little bit of the darkest color to that recess where the stem is and then I wash my brush off with some water and kind of smooth together the two different colors I have going. And you can already see that the cherry is starting to look pretty plump. I've repeated that process on the other two cherries. I still like my first one better, but the next thing we wanna do before adding any other layers is let this dry. So previously we had um, kind of let these work while they're still wet, but once we finalize this layer, you wanna really let it dry. That does mean we can go ahead and work on our stem because it's a different area. So I mix up kind of an olive -y type green and one of the things that I see people do is they really try to be very careful about how they put their stems. I find that doing kind of just an intentional flick along the general line that I've drawn ends up looking much better to represent. And then we also want to let that dry. So I have let my first layer dry for quite some time. This is going to vary depending on where you're at and what your humidity and heat level is within where you're working. And then I'm going to speed this up because we're basically going to kind of repeat the same steps. If we want to, we can adjust some colors. I usually like to make my second layer a little more vibrant. So you'll see I added a bit more pigmentation, both in kind of some oranges and maybe even some pinks to get in there. And, but we're going to repeat by adding our dark layers and our light layers and removing the pigment from the areas that we want to be seen as the bulbous areas. But I will speed this up so that you can see this kind of come together. And honestly, this is what makes it is this second layer because it adds some extra dimension. If you're still not happy after a second layer, you can always add a third and sometimes that does the trick. I really like how my first cherry turned out, the one to the far left and the middle one's okay. The one to the right, not super crazy about, but at the same token, it nature is nature and all cherries look different. If you're still not super duper happy, sometimes adding a layer or a, once they're dry, an outline with a nice pen will really help to pop these cherries out. So don't lose hope yet until you've tried pen, which is always the very final touch that can help things move along. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you try it, I'd love to know how it went. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I hope you have a magically creative day.